gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best. The Gardener Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialists of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardener and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Good morning everybody, I got my coffee. I'm ready to rock and roll. I hope you are because it's all done. Guys, there's so much to do. It's like, thank goodness the days are a little bit longer. Yeah, but have you felt that? It was this morning, actually. We've had, look, we've had sweltering. It's been cooking, guys. I could fry eggs on pavements. It's been super hot. I know you guys down on the Western Cape, you've had like 42s. If I have to hear my brother complain another day that it is so hot, um, let's not go there. Uh, but this morning, five o'clock, I felt that, that something in the air. Have you? Yeah, it's there, guys. It's coming, it's coming. Which means that Mother Nature is already telling us, guys, I'm giving you the signs, I'm giving you the signals, it's now time to get going. And I'm just gonna reinforce all those things today because let me tell you now, and I will repeat this, I'm gonna sound like a stuck record gramophone, DVD without Blu-ray, that if you do not do the work now in autumn, you will not reap the rewards in spring. Guys, it's as easy or as difficult as that. You have to do the work now. You have to. So make the, make the most of when the cooler days arrive and get there and do it. Okay, so there's lots on the go today. We've got a bit of bulbs, we've got a pruning, we're going to do a bit of composting. Oh, we're going to talk about a few pots. And um, But before we get into all that, whew, let's see who's online, guys. Let's have a look. Uh, morning. Ah, yes, Felicity, you felt it. Yes, yes, yeah, bo, yeah, bo. Um, See, Janse van Feren. See, CJ. CJ, ah, CJ, CJ. Uh, morning from, and regards, who? Tanya and Celeste from Klagstrop. Goeie morgen, jylle. Sebe Sisa, good morning. Um, Fels, good morning. Uh, Mariki, good morning. Um, oh, probleem ek. Quick, quick, cross. Yeah, ek hoor jou. Uh, Kathy, good morning. Um, who else do we have here? Soraya, good morning. Um, Dig it, SA, good morning. Daphne, um, good morning. And uh, Janine, morning from Waterfall. Pat, good morning from Brockenfeld. Gosh, you guys are all over SA. Farouk, good morning from Mitchell's Plain. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Amy van Beek. Hey, is that you, Amy? Is that the Amy? Yes, it is. I'm looking, oh, but your picture's very small there. Hmm. No, that is you. You must change your profile picture. You've got a dog now. <laughs> Patsy, good morning, good morning. Um, Candice, good morning from a sunny centurion. Desiree, hello. Nicole Green Thompson, good morning. Guys, it's wonderful to have you all with us, and we are about to get rocking and rolling. So, first things first most importantly is, so your Aggie's panties. You know what those are, huh? 
Aga Panthers, yes, Aggies Panties. So, and I hope by now all of you have got um, Blackjack in your garden, because we all know the famous Blackjack. I mean, it won multiple, multiple awards. And let me tell you, when I got my Blackjack, which came back with me in the aeroplane um, from Gauteng, true story, uh, it was one little plant. We popped it into the garden and it did have a flower on it. And I thought, oh my gosh, when this thing goes, it's gone. It is still flowering. It's still flowering, guys. It shows you the amazing genetics, the power behind that plant and what it gives. Um, it, it, it truly is beautiful. So a lot of your perennials, and, and I'm talking perennials. Now, don't get confused and don't get all stressed out. Your perennials were strapped like leaves. Okay, think of agapanthus. And why are they called Aggie's panties? Because my grandmother used to call them that. So they call Aggie's panties in our garden. So they are going to be coming to the end. Some of them will, might be just pushing their last flush. Okay. Your daylilies, they're probably waning now. They've had their major flush. They're looking amazing. If you found that your Aggie's, all those strap-like leaf things, didn't give you that, that, that beautiful summer show. If they sent up a flower here and there and they looked a bit scraggly, they just didn't give you that oomph. Then guys, it means that they're choking. They are choking. I mean, have you ever pulled out agapanthus? When you pull them out with a garden fork, I have bent garden forks. True story, digging them out. I have bent them. Because those roots are incredible. They're thick, they're fleshy, um, they're delicious. And when you pull them out, there's like that much leaf and there's like, whoa, that much root. So get them up. You've got to divide them. Whatever you do to the bottom, you don't have to plant all those roots, guys. You can prune them. And if you want anything detailed on that and anything more in depth, so that you get it right, please go and take a look at our Garden Tube channel because there's a whole thing on lifting and dividing perennials. But do it now, okay? Do it now. It's really, really important. That also goes for any other leafy things. So what is that? Your cannas, your arum lilies, yeah, 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 your arum lilies. So all of those that fit into that group, okay? Got it, right. Guys, weeds are going ballistic, okay? You know, and... There are lots of ways of dealing with weeds. There are lots of ways. There are sprays. Um, you can put newspaper over them. You can smother them. Uh, you can kick them with your tacky. There are various ways of getting rid, rid of weeds. But guys, the best way, please, when you see it, deal with it. It's like when you're walking along your path with your cup of coffee in the morning and you're walking along the gravel path and you see one little oaky there. He's like, yo, here I am. Just bend down and pick it up. Get it out. Pull it out. Remember, one year's seeding is seven years weeding. Ah, okay. So just nip it in the bud. Whatever. Just don't let it flower. Even if it means in your lawn, and I'm going to, yes, I know, the questions are going to start coming through. Even if it's in your lawn, just don't let them flower. Okay, if you don't have time to dig them out or to spray them or whatever, just don't let them flower. So put the lawnmower over them. Behead them. Easy. Behead them because then you are not going to allow for that next generation. Really, really important. Of course, one of the easiest ways, as well as if it's in between garden beds, just take your little trowel or take one of those long-handled little hose and you can just scrape them. Because the weed seeds, the weed's roots are normally not that far down. So you've just got to scrape it, leave them lying there. Because what are they going to do? They're going to end up forming mulch. They're a plant after all. You know the definition of a weed? It's just a plant that's come up in the wrong place. <laughs> According to us. <laughs> yes, okay. All right. So just scrape them, cut them off, and just leave them there and let them lie. And they will eventually then turn into beautiful organic matter. Very, very important. Okay, next up. All the leaves, yes, all the leaves are brown. You know that song? Yeah. No. Do you know that song? And the sky is blue. How does it go? Yes? Oh, the mamas and the papas. I don't know who sings it, but I know half the words. Anyway, so 
uh, they're going to be leaves, guys. And for those of you out there who are anal about your swimming pool, you are going to be fighting with the leaves even more and more and more. So what do we do with the leaves, guys? It is the opportunity of a lifetime. It is like the, the, the trees are just going and they're shaking down all those beautiful leaves to turn into something amazing. For those of you that put them into those blue bin bags and you wait for your municipality to come and fetch them, black star for you, naughty, naughty, no, not acceptable guys, because that has the ability to turn into something amazing. So what does it turn into? Yeah, well, we've got various ways. And you know, if you don't want to rake leaves, and I get it, raking leaves is like, Wah. so get yourself a blower, um, a blower vac, and if you can get one of those battery operated ones, just get the battery ones, don't get those cords. Oh, by the time you found the extension cord, by the time you found the two prong plug that somebody moved, you know, we've got a two prong plug, that's a very big word that, that's like saying chubby bunny. If you've got a two, we've got a two prong plug thief in this household. In fact, they're a serial two prong plug thief. I have threatened to super glue them into the plug point. Do you have that? Come on, tell me I'm not alone. Make me feel better. Tell me that I'm not alone. I, I really, I, seriously, I, I hope I'm not alone or else I have a serious complaint. Anyway, what happens? So we get the leaks, okay? So you've used your blower vac or whatever it is, and we have got loads of leaves. And what we do is we just pop them into these black bin bags because we end up with a whole lot. We end up with like kind of too much. Okay, so they, they either go into the black bin bags, and this is generally when we start having like overproduction, serious overproduction. So this is like what we left with and you probably all see this i mean you know all this stuff it's just this is everything okay so some of it we blow into the garden beds which will then end up oh and i got a little little bit of wildlife coming along here for the ride um hello big guy okay back in you go um so most times use a very thick micron black bin bag else you're going to end up with some troubles. Okay, so a lot of it goes into here, a lot of it goes into the compost heap, and a lot of it goes straight onto the garden beds to form a beautiful mulch. But whatever you do, you are not going to throw it away, please. So what are our options when we've got this? So let me get rid of this boy over here, and this is what we can do. Number one, we can turn it into leaf mold, which is the most beautiful, Oh, look at it. Just look at it. It. Ah, oh, I wish you could smell it. Mm, I think I got them on there. Tastes good. It smells, it's earthy, it's organic. It's breaking down, composting, turning into, look what we end up with. Turning into soil. Leaf mold forms a beautiful look, and we've even got a worm that's coming along here for the ride. So, guys, this is what happens. And if you want to know how to make leaf mold, please take a look at our YouTube channel because we have done it many, many times. But I'm just going to give you a quick tip. It's really easy. All it requires is a black bin bag, and you are from zero to hero. And all the last bit I want to say to you about leaf mold is make sure that you write in a white cokey pen on the black bin bag. Do not throw away because somebody in your household will think it's rubbish and throw it away. But this stuff is the stuff of champions. What do you do with it? Well, you put it around your plants. You mulch once you've pruned. You can sieve this and create the most beautiful organic medium to germinate your seeds in. Ah, so many different uses. Okay, so that's the leaf mold. Eventually, from the leaf mold, we're going to end up with compost if we let it go that one step further. But, okay, I'm talking compost. I can already hear you moaning. I don't have enough space for my compost heap. Oh, it's going to bring the rats. Okay, guys, compost heaps are, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Some of you don't want to buy them. You don't want to make them because you don't have space. So last night... I was like hanging around and I'm like, so what is an easy way to make a compost bin? Okay, easy, affordable. 
because some of you don't have space. Yeah, you're in townhouses. I, I get it. You're in small environments and they don't want to see this big thing. All right. So what we did was, this is really, really easy. Um, so I went to the garage and I found this roll of fencing. You can see it's pretty old. It's, I mean, it's got like probably a hundred spiders in here, spider nests and stuff. So I cut a piece of this, 1.6, cut a piece of that. And what did we cut it with? No, we did not use the pair of sacketeers to cut it. No, no, you're just going to use one of these uh, cool wire snips. You see that? Every household needs one of these. Yeah. So all we did was we cut that and I'm not making the whole thing here because it will just take up too much time. I literally laid it out on this table, okay, that wire. Laid it out, put a brick on each side. I then cut a piece of weed guard, okay, the same length. Lay the weed guard over the mesh, okay? Nice and easy. Then, took one time screwdriver, made a whole lot of little holes, dink, dink. And please, this is secret tip. <laughs> yeah. When you've made the holes and you're gonna use your good old faithful cable tie, because every DIYer needs cable ties, you're gonna take your cable tie, make two little holes, put it through, but you're not gonna put it through here where it can move up and down put it through over a join. Do you see that? So then the weed guard doesn't move. Okay, do you see that? The weed guard's not going to move. It's not going to move that way. It's not going to move that way. Put it together. Cable tie your whole little gadget together. Fold over the weed guard and boom, we have got one times compost bin. Okay, you can make many. You can make many. And God, this has to be the simplest, most affordable way that you can do it. You can have three of these, four of these. You have to have at least a minimum of two compost bins. And then it's really simple. Then your leaves go into it, wherever you are, wherever you place it, because remember, compost bins need to be turned. You have to turn them, okay? So wherever you're gonna decide to put it, let's pretend it's gonna be here. All right, then in, our, in your leaves are gonna go, and remember, making a compost heap is like making a good Dagwood sandwich, okay? It's layer upon layer upon layer of goodness. And whether it is green, whether you're using the lawn clippings, whether you're using some cardboard, egg boxes, tea leaves, coffee grinds, eggshells. Remember, compost heaps are strictly vegetarian. Vegetarian. In fact, I think they vegan. Yes, they vegan. Okay, so layers and layers and layers. And what is important, because where most compost heaps fail, is in the following very, very simple observation. Because there's going to be a lot of pruning that's going to be taking place now in the garden, and you've done your pruning and you've got all this excess garden material, the garden waste, you're going to want to put it in here. The smaller you cut it, the quicker it composts. Do not put in tree trunks, stems, huge branches. It's logic, guys. Cut it up fine, put it into here, layer upon layer upon layer. So if you want compost like this, which is this beautiful stuff, ah, look at that. If you want compost like that for free, within six to eight weeks, this is what you got to do. And it's really easy because we've done layer, 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 layer. Once every two weeks, you've got to do this. You take this good stuff over here. You've got to give it a good shake. Now it's called compost activator. Guys, you might not think it's got the oomph, but it's got the oomph, okay? So in here are living hohos, living. Living hohos that you can add and what they do is they living microbes so they help the breaking down process of the leaves. So as soon as we add these things together, the natural process will happen, but we're going to turbo boost it. And that's literally what we're doing when we're adding this stuff in. So 23 different strains of really, really good microbes, living microbes. And all it is, is 50 moles. Yeah, that's about it. You could even go 100, guys, because you can never add too much. So that's the beauty of it. This 
into five liters of water. And here is the tip. Five liters of water, guys, preferably rainwater, not chlorinated. So if you do take it out your tap, let it sit for at least 24 hours. And then, because you're adding something living, this is alive. This is like yeast when you want to rise and make bread, okay? So you don't want to kill it with any chlorine or any chachas that is in the water. So rainwater, 50 mils, five liters of water, and then you just pour it on, okay? You can dilute it into a watering can and you just then pour it on. You do that every two weeks, guys, and then once a month, you just lift this guy up. Lift them up, okay? Yeah, so everything falls out. Turn your compost heap, put it back, and what is important is that you cover it. Because if you cover it, remember you're trapping in all the, the, the heat. You're trapping it in, you're keeping those little hojos really happy. What do you cover it, guys? Let's not overthink it. You either cover it with an extra bag of leaf mold or your leaves, or you just take one of these black bin bags and you line it with that, or even just a bit of weed guard. Don't overthink it, everybody. Don't overthink it. Biggest problem. Biggest problem is overthinking. Okay, now let me move my said compost heap across there. So guys, compost activator, every two weeks, pop it in. It's really going to give it that punch and just make it get there much, much quicker. Because we're all impatient creatures. We are all impatient. And what we want at the end of the day is to be able to take this and use it. And that... I find, and it's such a simple thing in gardening, but I am continuously amazed that leaves and sticks turn into this. Think about it. It, it, it is quite amazing. And it has so much to add to your garden. So, so much. Okay, so, yeah, that's uh, the compost maker. Yes, I am slightly obsessed about making compost. I will own it. Uh, and my, my compost heaps are inspected regularly. And, uh, but the rewards that you get from it are, are truly so incredible in terms of what it's going to give back to your garden. Because it came from your garden. It came from. So we're completing that cycle. Okay. Right. Stock up on frost protection, guys. If you don't remember what cupboard you hid it in or where you did, or where you couldn't, because I know we all put things in cupboards and we forget about it. Stock up on your frost guard, especially if you're in an area that you know that your temperatures are going to drop. Stock up on it, make sure that you've got it, because when those temperatures drop and you read your weather app in the early evening and the shops have closed, uh-oh, trouble. Okay, so make sure that you've got it. Um, and remember, you don't have to take it off. Plants can live with this stuff on it. They can grow and live. That's why it's a good product. And it protects your soft plants, especially like these beautiful coleus in this front pot over here. And man, I mean, autumn. Autumn allows certain plants just to like come alive and flourish. And they, they truly are doing their thing. Um, and a lot of plants that are doing their thing, I'm going to touch on with them just, 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 just now. Um, so I, I want to see here. Did anybody get my song? No, but they agree with the plug. They agree with the? The plugs that walk out the house. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not on my own. I thought I was going mad for one minute. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Right. Guys, hedging. Your hedging plants need a light trimming, okay? You're going to be giving a light trimming now, especially if you are in the, very, in the areas where the temperatures do drop very, very quickly. So you're going to go, you're going to give your hedging plants their last little trim. So whether it's toperies, whether it's your hedges, whether it's box hedging. And remember when you are trimming, guys, there are a few important things that we always need to bear in mind. Whether you are going to be creating toperies, whether you are going to be shaping. The tools that you are going to be using are so important <laughs> because they decide. They are going to help you along the way and make it not look like it's really had a fight with the barber. Um, 
And remember, with any hedging, it's removing small amounts at regular intervals that is going to give you that beautiful thick hedging. The mistake that most of us make, and I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it. So uh, the, the two things that I like using, I like using this little guy. Man, he, gosh, so lovely. It's so lovely. You can use it for anything. We use it for the edges in the garden. I tried it on the Yorkie, no I didn't. <laughs> you can use it on the edges of the garden, you can use it for that. I love using it on the rounded toperies because I just get so much more flexibility. Um, and what I do love about this is that I can switch it out, switch this blade out with, yeah, with this blade over here. And then I've got for my straight edges, okay, so if I'm going up and down, get those angles works really really nice yes i know you have been there halfway through you need a coffee break lunchtime you're still at it the first plane has gone over it's time for an oros you're still there in the afternoon ah, i know it and then you lose focus and the hedge goes woo. There is a time and a place for this, and I do love them. Um, just consider the following, because this is all about ergonomics. Because I know you do a muscle workout, you find muscles that you've never found before. But one thing I do is any of the ones that I use has this rubber, okay? It has that rubber. So it stops that, you know, I know you've got to pair them. I know you've got to pair them where the metal hits metal. Yeah, and it like, shudders through your whole body. So I like using this. And guys, remember, it's a very little, 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 little clipping. It's a small, gentle pruning. With these, I get really good accuracy. Now, the problem that we make, or that the mistake that we make when we are trying to get a hedge so that we don't see the beautiful neighbor, is that as we are pruning and, it's, and, and shaping, it's a natural inclination it is a natural thing we start at the top okay and then somehow we end up going in so we go like we end up cutting like that you, you've seen this you have so you start if you're standing okay and you you're busy cutting 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 somehow and i think it's because your shoulder drops or somehow you but you start going inwards instead of going down straight and then slightly out Okay, that's the trick of hedges. Hedges need to be cut like that. Do you see that? Wider at the base, slightly narrower at the top to allow light through. Because when you cut them like that, <laughs> there it is. When you cut them like that, this foliage stops light from getting there. It stops light. Leaves need light to grow. Yeah, they do. So what happens? You start getting a naked hedge at the bottom. The leaves fall off. Eventually, you're seeing straight through the hedge with this little lollipop, a few leaves on top, and you can see the Rottweiler next door. Yeah. Okay, so it, it really is important that you just taper it going out slightly and um, do that. Give them a good feed, give them a good mulch, and, um, and they'll be back on their way. Okay, very, very, very important. And it's such a little mistake. It's such an innocent, simple thing that, that we do, and yet it can have huge consequences in our lives, and especially with our other halves when we can see the neighbor's kneecaps. Right, there are a lot of plants at the moment that really are coming into their own, and they look amazing in autumn. They put on their autumn flair um, and they really do look spectacular. So what are some of those? We've spoken about the coleus and guys, I mean, I just can't get enough of these plants because uh, this one's called wasabi and I get it why it's called wasabi. This one's called redhead. The colors are vibrant, they're amazing. Um, 
they really take cuttings very easily, although I'm not meant to tell you that. Um, I will urge you, take a look up here. Mace, I just want you to come to this flower. Do you see they're starting to flower now? Guys, I urge you not to let it flower. Don't let it flower. All I want you to do is just nip that off like that. There we go. Just break it off with your thumb and forefinger. Because as soon as they start flowering, all the energy is going into the flowers and the leaves end up becoming quite miserable, thin and spindly. So we rather want it on the foliage. If at this point in your garden they're looking quite scraggly, give them a hard pruning, a good mulching, and they'll come away again. Plants that are coming into their own are these crotons. I mean, look at these colors. It's like a kaleidoscope. They're electric. They are, they are possibly some of the best. And if you are in, in a cooler area where you know you get frost, keep it in a pot. Uh, you can then move it onto your patio. You can even move it indoors into a very bright light area, well lit area, and it'll last right through the winter. And then you can move that pot out again during the summer months. But amazing colors, they really do come into their own. And I've never ever thought in my wildest dreams I'd ever be saying that I loved a croton because I grew up with them. Uh, but somehow, yeah, changed my mind. Anyway, um, guys, plants that are also coming into their own now that are going to need a little bit of a helping hand. You will notice that your azaleas, some of your azaleas are flowering. It's weird, hey? Like, why are they flowering now? We're going into autumn. Well, in fact, azaleas are all rhododendrons, as you call them, but these are the little azaleas. This is one called Encore. Encore are beautiful. Why? They're more compact. So they're not those big, 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 big magenta ones. They stay nice and compact, get about 40 by 40, can grow sun, semi-shade, even under trees they do well. They keep their foliage and they bloom more than once. That's why they're good. But in autumn, you will probably get the most perfect flowers out of your azalea. And so they're gonna give you this little autumn flush now. They're then gonna to go to sleep and then await spring. And when spring arrives, boom, that's when they really put on that full, full show. But there's a group of plants that need a little helping hand. So what are those? Those are all of your acid loving plants. So that's azaleas, camellias, what else? Gardenias, yes, you've got it. Okay, and I'm going to show you a little bit later what they are going to need. But most importantly, right now, what I want you to do is, you've got this. Of course you have. You've got your leaf mold. So around these plants, you're going to place a thick layer of your leaf mold. Okay, place it around there because, why? Because all of these plants that flower in spring produce their buds during the winter months. They don't wake up in September and say, oh, sorry, I've got a flower, and make a flower. The buds have been producing all during the cooler months. They've been growing and growing and growing. And the first time that we see them is when we walk out after the long winter like bears from Antarctica and say, oh, look, darling, it's got a bud. They've been, they've been producing and swelling and growing and just waiting for the temperatures to warm up. Bang! and then they do it. So you've got to keep them moist because what do they need? They need moisture in order to develop. Yes, yeah, I know, you're thinking it. My camellia buds fall off. Yeah, they fall off because the plant is lacking in moisture, which means if you mulch, if you feed it with what I'm about to tell you to use, and you make sure that it's giving and getting enough water, you're not going to have that bud drop, okay? Very important, very, very important. Okay, right, 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 right. Where are we? Ah, pruning, pruning, pruning. Okay, oh, this is where we get to have lots of fun. Okay, guys, so uh -huh. some of you might have a plant that looks like this in the garden right now. True story, you think it's looking gorgeous. However, <laughs> far from nice and nice from far, one of those, hey? All of your salvias, a lot of your salvias right now in the garden, and I'm going to talk about most of the salvias in your garden, even the indigenous varieties, um, have going to have peaked. Or well, they are in, they are peaking at the moment. 
Um, they're on full flower. They're looking fantastic. After that, what do we do? You have to prune. You have to. If you don't prune, you're going to end up with sticks like this, sticks like this, and it looks really awful and raggedy. So what do we do? Very simple, guys. Very, very simple. And don't ooh and ah and have a complete meltdown because you have to do this. You have to do this in order to get that beautiful autumn flush and prepare them for the winter. Um, look at this Salvia Lucantha. It's already telling you, it's already telling you that it wants to shoot. It wants to give up and process the next generation. So general rule of thumb, any plant, remove two thirds, leave one third behind. So remove two thirds, any thin spindly growth, remove that, okay? That is going to end up in our compost, okay? And there we go, there we go, there we go. And yeah, we'll do that. Mm, these I will, no, nah. okay? So that's what you're gonna do. Lovely leaf mold around it, okay? And then a good feeding. What do we feed with? Use something like 315 Organic, all right? A nice good handful, and not even a handful. Per shrub, you probably would use um, three teaspoons, more than enough. Three teaspoons around each shrub, give it a good watering in, and away the plant is going to come again. Please do not panic mechanic. It's going to grow. I do. I, I promise you it's going to grow. Same with the salvia. All you're going to do is remove all the spindly growth. There will be quite a bit of dead growth in here as well. So get rid of that first. And it's also a great time to take cuttings. So you could take cuttings of all of these that you're removing. Um, but I want to jump to that. So I'm literally just going to give this a quick pruning and then show you what we're going to do. So here, this is too spindly. Actually, I'm just going to take it off. Remove it down to two thirds. We're going to keep these bits here. And I'm going to keep spindly growth, get rid of. So you see, we're removing dead spindly growth. We are leaving one or two of the strong stems, which is what we want. And then it will simply just renew itself. Plants are amazing. They really, really are. So, oh, pruning. I love pruning. Yo, it's very therapeutic. Very, very, very. Okay. So there, I'm going to take that. I'm going to keep it there. And when you're pruning, you want to look for what we call a node. There's a node. Okay. You see a little square stem? There's a little bump. That's a node. Just... Just above that. Okay, just above that. Right, that'll do the job there. Now what do we do? Okay, well, we've got all these plants because once you've pruned it, you're going to have lots of cutting material and the leftovers are going to go to your compost. So once you have pruned that plant, that's what's going to happen to it. It's going to reshoot, look at all that new foliage straight from the bottom and it's going to look gorgeous like this. Yeah, that's what a haircut does. Okay, so... Uh, let's talk quickly about what you're going to do with these bits and pieces. How are we on time? Because I know I'm running behind. I know I am. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Stay on the line, caller. Oh, stay on the line, caller. Right. When it comes to taking cuttings, guys, um, it's very, very simple. And I'm going to really rush through this. And we will be doing it again, so please don't stress. Most importantly is your cutting material. So your cutting material needs to be fresh, okay? Don't let it lie in the sun. Put it into a shaded spot. Do it as soon as possible. And here we are just going to be taking little cuttings. When we've got too big a leaf like that, we just reduce the leaf surface. Do you see that? I've got a nice little stem. It's got two growth points. That's all I need. Plectranthus, most of your soft perennials, it's a great time to take cuttings of them now. So that's it. I could be here all day and I could take loads and loads of cuttings, but let's show you very quickly how to get it right. Uh, what we want is a bit of palm peat. So the palm peat goes into our tray, into a pot. You can put them into anything, guys. Um, but most importantly, just use the palm peat because the palm peat is going to do so, so much. Now we know this beautiful stuff. We know that it starts in a block like this, <laughs> in a block like this, and it ends up making five liters of this beautiful stuff. Okay, five liters of water in here, leave it. No, you don't cut the block in half. No, 
Have I jumped ahead? What am I doing? Oh, never mind. I'm on track. And you don't cut the block. You put the whole block in here and decompose the whole block. And then when you finish using it, put the lid on the Tupperware and hide it. Okay. Very important. If you want to get good cuttings is to use hormone powder. Okay. Down a root. It's called, you get one, two, and three. Okay. They're for different types of cuttings. You get softwood, semi-hardwood, and hardwood. Okay. Most times, the one you're going to use the most is number two. Number two is the one you're going to use. But here are a quick things. A little bit too much. And I'm going to tell you why. Little bit into a bucky. Okay. And the other one. In the other one, you're going to add a wee bit of water. A little bit of water. Okay. You take your cutting. Take your cutting. Dip it into water. Dip it into the rooting powder. So this is a hormone powder which encourages rooting. It stimulates rooting. Which is what all the clever people out there use when they're taking cuttings. From there, straight in. Straight in to our palm peat and what I use is a chopstick. <laughs> One of the easiest things. You hold it and you firm it down. That's it. Next one. Dip, dip, in it goes. Here we go. It's the most gratifying thing you can do. <laughs> okay. That's it. If you've got one of these little propagators like I've got, fantastic. Um, you then give it a good watering once they're in. A nice watering. And in your second and third watering, because when we put this on here, like that, and we close the lids, it forms its own little environment. And you don't have to worry that they're going to dry out. However, next time you're going to water, how do you know the next time you're going to water when this changes colour? I would then suggest that you add some of this Turbo Boost material. This is Turbo Boost Kawabunga stuff, okay? It's Kelpak, it's a seaweed solution that just helps the plants give them a little bit of oomph. It's like having a little vitamin B injection. Dilute it into water, into your little watering spout here, and you give them a water. Anything that looks like it's sick or it's got a cough, you can do that. Just give it to them. Don't you drink it. Okay. Right. Next thing. We've all been collecting rainwater, guys. Yes, we've been collecting rainwater. Because winter is coming. Unless you live in the Western Cape, then the rain is coming. But still, you are going to be collecting. And it's really important, and I know that some of you have experienced this, where all of a sudden, when you start using the grey water, that... Oh, yeah, the water starts stinking. <laughs> it's stagnant. It's stagnant water. And of course, you're not adding chlorine into it because you're going to be using that on the garden. Okay, so what do we do? What do you use? Guys, we use this by the gallon full. In fact, on the other side of the studio here, I have five litre buckets of it. In fact, I think they're 20 litres. They're big, big, big things because we catch a lot of rainwater and we don't want it to go to waste. It's called Smell Away. I believe they've changed the packaging or something, but I have this one here and it is full of good, good little microbes. Okay. What does it do? So, very big explanation, but bottom line is it's got 23 different genera of beneficial microbes, which basically creates in here, per gram, you are going to get billions, billions of good microbes. They have the ability to break down lipids and long complex protein, these things, which is what creates the smell. But they eat it. <laughs> that's what they do. They live on, they break it down. And when they break it down, they take away the smell because that's what creates the smell. And it's called lipids. It's really easy, guys. And if you want one of those, if you're not on a municipal sewage system, like if you've got a septic tank, you can also add this to your septic tank. And it's really easy. I mean, it's like 100 mils, glug, 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 into your toilet, flush it, boof, there it goes. Or straight into your water tank. 100 mils, pour it in. And that's it. it. It 
it's very easy, very, very easy. And the microbes do their thing. So that really, really does help and it stops that, um, that stinky stinky. Okay. Gosh, I think I need a cup of tea. Um, so we are getting into a very important section now, which is what you need to be doing on top of what I've just told you. And um, so stay right where you are, because um, we'll be right back. Alrighty, so we told you your azaleas, your camellias, your gardenias. Yeah, what else? Hydrangeas, but we're going to get to those. So, you know that you've got to put the leaf mulch around them. You have to, guys, have to, have to, have to. And please, especially naked soil. You know, I, I, I often, I say, think about nature. When you're walking in the felt, when you... When you're walking in a forest, when you're looking at a hillside, do you see a plant sitting or a tree or a beautiful shrub growing with just naked soil around it? Do we see that? No, no we don't. Which is why when we make a new garden bed, we make a new garden bed and there's all this bare soil because we want this plant now to grow and take up the space. We cannot leave naked, bare soil. Think about it. The sun is beating down. It's hot. It's going to kill all the microbes. It's going to kill anything that was there. So look after the soil. Look after the soil. It is so, so important. Okay. Now, in order to keep these guys looking good, what I want you to do is use some hydrangea food. Now, it's very easy. Please don't stress yourselves out. I'm looking for my watering can. There are two ways that you can apply this. And this is also for what we call acid-loving plants. So that's all the plants I've mentioned. And your hydrangeas. Because your hydrangeas are the same. Oh, and by the way, FYI, all of these plants I've just mentioned, you do not, you do not prune them in winter. Oh, golly gosh. Yeah. Did you have hydrangeas in December that were just big, green, and leafy? Oh, they looked so beautiful. They were just lots of foliage. Any flowers? No, negative. That's because you prune them in winter. <laughs> if you prune them in winter, remember I was telling you, when do the flower buds develop? If you prune them in winter, guys, you are pruning away the flower buds. Okay, so no pruning in winter. Okay, no, no, negative, negative. So, all you're going to do is 5 to 10 grams of this, and you get a little, a little gadget inside here. You get one of these little things, okay? So you can't, really can't mess it up. 5 to 10 grams in 5 liters of water, and you just pour it on. So, it's a good drench. It goes around. It's a drench into the soil. The other way you can do it is a foliar feed. So, a foliar feed, I definitely recommend that for the plants that are containers that you want them to just like look a bit more pimped, okay, that you really want to pay attention to. So those with the foliar feed, all it is, guys, is in a pressure sprayer. Here you're going to use 10 grams in 5 litres of water, build up your pressure, and then that is a foliar feed. So that's when it's going onto the foliage. So you do that, and you do, and you then do the drench around it. Okay, so that's that. Next thing, color, 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 color. We all want color, guys. We all want color. And if you have got some of these or any flowering indoor plants, whether it is a beautiful anthurium like this, isn't that pink lovely? Oh, I saw a white one the other day. Man, I saw a white one. I was like, I want you. Um, they, they are... They are completely, they're, they're, they're quite an enigma to find the white one, but I did see a white one, and it was on Facebook the other day, I saw a yellow, 
<gasps> oh, my knees. My knees went weak. It was from some oki okay that was visiting Holland. I nearly messaged him and asked him to bring it back in his socks. Um, but anyway, so color. Guys, whether it's on your patio or whether it's indoors, uh, we all know that we want to have it. So how do you keep it going? How do you make it look good? And how do you keep it alive? Importantly, what I want you to know is that you need to feed. Feed. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Because remember, whether it's a beautiful orchid like this, and I've created such a mind dump of plants around here, I can't even get around. So whether it is a beautiful orchid, just like this, that is in flower and looking spectacular because a lot of them come into flower now. Um, your cymbidiums are going to flower during the winter months. Um, your oncidiums are in flower now. They are looking spectacular. And this oh, is the most beautiful fragrance. So, And some of you might have that moth orchid and you're saying, how do I keep it alive? It's very, very simple, guys. It's about keeping your moisture constant. Don't let it dry out. Give it a misting on the very hot, dry days and feeding, <laughs> feeding. Because remember, this plant can go nowhere else to get its nutrition. In nature, they're normally growing on trees, in the forks of trees where leaves fall. And when leaves break down, they release nutrition. Here, it's trapped in our little pot, so it can't get any nutrition. So there are two things that I want you to use, and it's very simple. Don't overcomplicate it and no ice cubes. No ice cubes for no orchids. You hear me? Please, that is nonsense, okay? So all I want you to do is use one of these, either one of these, depending on where it is. Now, strangely enough, so this is called flowering orchid. So you use this when your orchid is green, when you want it to flower. This is when it is in flower, shortly after flowering. So you want to make sure you get your timing right here because you, you don't use this, most people use this when it's in flower. <laughs> it's the wrong way around. No, it's to make it flower. It's to make it flower. Okay, so it's very easy when you're doing that, guys. And I want to show you how to make it last longer. How to make it last longer. Because um, when we have got a whole lot of plants, yeah, when we've got a whole lot of plants and we don't want to go around with a watering can, and we've got a whole lot of children and babies, just like this little orchid, and we need to water them and we need to feed them. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one of the simplest, quickest ways that you're able to water and feed at the same time. So this one, we want it to come into flower, okay? So we are going to want to get it to flower. So it's very, very easy. Five to 10 grams into five liters of water. Give it a good shake up, okay? And all of those little things will not dissolve. So please don't stress about that. Okay. And I always add a bit of Turbo Boost. Okay. Mix it up. Pop the plant in there. Give it a good watering. Let it sit in there. And you know, whilst you're doing this, which is why I also love it. Whilst you are doing this, a whole lot of things are going on. Number one, you're actually looking at the plant. You're actually going to inspect it to see if it's got hohos, if it's got nunus, if it's got a disease, if it's not happy. You leave it there. You leave it. Let it absorb everything. Beautiful. Leave it for about 20 minutes. And you do that every two weeks with your indoor plants, any of your specials, your orchids, that you want to flower, and life just happens. And you've saved a whole lot of plant food. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, next up, veggies. Guys, yes, it's autumn. One of the most important, important times of the year in order to get your veggie garden looking amazing. Of course, with the cooler season comes all your brassicas. What are brassicas? Broccoli, cabbage, yeah, yeah, cauliflower, what else? Brussels sprouts, yeah, mustards, yep, what else, kale, yeah, all of those things, you've got to be sowing them now, okay, um, and I'm not going to go into seed sowing, guys, because you've seen that a million times, and if you don't know how to do it, then make sure you check out Garden Tube, because I've got some great tips on there on seed sowing, however, I am just going to tell you this, one extra bit 
of info. We all have our different quirks on seed sowing. Oh, by the way, the reason why I emptied some of this, which I never told you, into here. This was my Dyna Root Hormone Powder. If the cutting that I was using was diseased, it had a virus, it had a bacteria. When you are finished with this, you throw it away. You do not put it back into the container. You do not. If you put it back into the container and there was a virus or a bacteria which we can't see, ha ha, guess who's spreading the love? Okay, so you throw that away. You do not ever put it back inside there. It's such a small thing. <laughs> it's such a small thing that has ruined large corporations and growers who grow thousands of plants simply because of that. Okay, so guys, what do you sow now? The world is your oyster. Literally, the world is your oyster. From carrots to radish to spinach to turnips, and don't bash the turnip. They are good, as long as you pick them young. As long as you pick them young, they are good. Don't let them get this big. No. Pick them nice and young because they're delicious and yummy. Cauliflower, Great Lakes lettuce, sow them now. And I'm going to give you one, one quick tip. If you are sowing something that is very, very fine, like this, lettuce, Great Lakes, best lettuce, crisp, crispy, crispy lettuce. <gasps> the seed is small, guys, the seed is small and fine. And it tells you, oh my, yes, just, yeah, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And you all get stressed out and nervous. Like, don't sow the whole packet. Please. What are you going to do with the thousand lettuce? You're going to open up a spaza outside Woolworths. True story. But you know, I don't know what you're going to do unless you've got a big family. So remember, you're going to use the palm peat. Okay, you're going to use the palm peat if you're sowing directly into the garden or if you are sowing into trays. What is important, and, and this might help you guys, is if you need to bulk up the seed, because I don't know about you, but when I've got the seed in my hand, okay, I've got the seed in my hand, now I'm starting to sow. Concentration, okay? Because now you somehow have got to get this distributed evenly in the... Really? It's like chunks of seed start going down into the holes, and you're like, I can't get this right! Okay, yeah, I know, I know, I'm with you, it's okay. So what I do, I either use Mealy Meal, Mealy Meal, no brand, or flour, okay? And I take my seeds and I dump them into there and I mix them around. Because, <gasps> hey, caramba, I now get to see the seeds. They're now bulked up and let's pretend, let us pretend that we are sowing Okay, let's pretend that we are now sowing into little pots or whatever we're going to be doing and we keep it very, very simple. We've got our little, I love these, uh, little cardboard pots, which you can also make your own just on a newspaper. Uh, we, all we're going to do is add a bit of palm peat into them. Nice and easy, level it off, pop it there and we're going to take a bit of this mixture. You're just going to do that. Ah, ah, isn't that so relaxing? Because I know, because I've mixed it in here, I've got some seeds in here, and I've got some of the flour, and I also know, or the mealy meal, where it is. I can now see where the white is where I sowed. Life is much simpler and easier, and much calmer. And I know that the seed's not going to come up next door. <laughs> True story. <laughs> okay, um... Guys, also, sweet peas, I know you all want sweet peas and you're all going to want to sow them now because if you don't do it now, it's going to be too late. So, in terms of winter colour, there are so many varieties. But, please, depending on what you're wanting, whether it's the dwarf little sweet peas or whether it's the tall climbing, this variety is spectacular. This is a Villa Roma. She's more fluffy. She's a bit more voluptuous. She's like, she's got this beautiful... What do you call one of those things? Spanish. Oh, she's like a Spanish dancer. Yes, they've got those fluffy ruffled things. Like a Spanish dancer. She's quite voluptuous. 
Well, I don't know. Um, anyway, so uh, this this is much more petals, and you know, the more wavy it is, like a bird, the more fancy it is, the more beautiful it is. So whether you're wanting the dwarf or the tall climbing, get sewing now, all right? But with sweet peas, and I want to show you the difference. So um, this over here, what we did was, before you sew, the night before, and I want to show you the difference. It is so amazing. Look here, come in nice and close. These have been soaking in water overnight. Oh, wait, let me get rid of some of that water because then you might be able to actually see what's going on. Um, so you soak your sweet pea seeds overnight. Really important, guys, because sweet peas, look at the difference. They've got this hard, hard outer shell. They really are hard and in, almost impenetrable. So when, if you don't soak them, Look at this here. How am I going to do this? I'm actually going to do it like this. Yo, I'm making a terrible mess here. So just look at this difference here between what was soaked overnight and not. So you can see the size in what we had was that compared to that. So overnight they have absorbed the water just leaving in this little bowl, they've changed color because the little outer husk, this tough outer husk has become softer because I can now even just tear it with my nail. If I didn't do that, imagine how long this little guy is gonna take to germinate. Imagine. Okay, so soak them overnight. Make, it'll make the most, the biggest difference. Okay, very, very important. Right, from that to African daisies, to calendulas, uh, to what else? What else have we got? Gosh, I'm hitting a blank here. Um, oh, book by Fahis. Have you not sewn book by Fahis? <gasps> they are the newest little succulent, little Fahi that you can sow directly in situ. Millions of seeds in here. And it's the finest seed in the world. But uh, they will come up year and year and year and year on. Okay, guys, I think I'm right out of time, but before I go, before I go, um, what I do want to tell you is that if you are still seeking more information and more on what I can help you with in your garden, and the last few tips before I get there, the last few tips. Guys, as temperatures start cooling down, lift the mowing height on your lawnmower. Lift your mowing height slightly because your lawns are going to start going quieter. They're going to start going into a slight dormancy. Lift your mowing height. Give them a good feeding, okay? Give your lawns a good last autumn feeding. Use something like the 315 Organic and give it a good watering afterwards. All right. Very, very important. And remember, your lawn clippings, you're also going to be adding to your compost heap. So, I think that is all I'm going to tell you for autumn. I think I've given you enough to do. Uh, lastly, if you're looking for more inspiration, grab your latest copy of Detainee or The Gardener. This is hot off the press. It is going to be available to you right now at your local garden center or your local retail outlet. We focus on the beautiful, stately, architecturally brilliant agaves. Uh, we talk about what you should be sowing right now, pruning, everything that I've spoken about and more and yummy recipes to go with it. Plus we feature a most beautiful garden, uh, which is, it has a lovely story. Um, and remember, gardens are about the people and the plants, or the plants and the people. Um, so delve into it, because within these pages, um, holds a whole lot of inspiration for you and your family and to make your gardens and you a better gardener and of course get your hands on a copy of grow to eat magazine where all the yummies we've spoken about and more plus your lunar gardening guide are all in here folks that is it it has been a crazy crazy masterclass. there's a lot on the go um, and uh, remember to catch me at my builders masterclasses if you want to want to know where they are, make sure to follow me on Facebook. Uh, also check out our website, thegardener.co.za. And remember to check out our YouTube channel. Till next time I see you, right here, or maybe in store. Um, God bless you all. 
Take care of you and yours and happy gardening. Thank you. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialists of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardener and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. If gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best.